Are you a deviant? You know, like those of us who binge watch serial killer programs, laugh at the stupid shit people do, and revel in anything adult? Well, you found your people. Join us as we crack open the door to the padded cell and release the insanely stupid, the weirdly wonderful, and those who choose to live outside societal norms. We'll delve into the strange, the macabre, the sexy, and the outrageous. So if you're a deviant, then you have your place with us in the padded cell. Hello and welcome to episode 26 of the Pat Cell podcast. And look who we've got. It's me again. It's trouble. <laughs> on my own. It's trouble. On your own. Semi-sensible. I was going to say, does this mean we're going to get sensible <clears throat> Ryan today or are yeah. we going to get laughing and joking Ryan? I don't Because um, Nancy is not here, you see. She, I, I, she's you haven't bad, got her to bounce off really. Bad I distraction think. for me. Oh, so you're blaming her for your bad behaviour. Aren't yeah. you brave and she's not here? Yes. You do know she's going to watch this <laughs> and you're going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I making you shifty and nervous already? <laughs> yeah. Lady C's not in the bills, and I, know, I haven't I'm, got my Lady C <laughs> garb on. I'm equally as scared of Nance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So you're more scared uh, of Nancy than you are of me. No, or no, no. Equally. equally. E- equal parts. I need to do something about this. <laughs> I need to be more Shit. scary. No, you don't. I've got a reputation, mate. I know, but you don't. You know, it's it's fine. Okay. Well, we'll see how this this has, has Nancy twisted your nipple. Fucking hell. <laughs> that escalates No, no, but has she? That's the reason I'm terrified of her. Um, no. Right, next Patreon. <laughs> no, she's not twisting me nipple on the next Patreon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Honest to God, she's got gorilla grip. I'm going to take your word for that. Yeah, I do. I mean, then again, I've seen her nails. I like talons, big pointy motherfuckers. She's fucking terrifying. Okay, so did you allow her to twist your nipple? Did no, she covertly God, no, creep I, I, up? I've, I've heard the horror stories and she just got me one day and it wasn't even full belt and it still hurts now. Okay, so I've got to exceed the twisty nipple to become scarier <laughs> yeah. than no, Nancy. No, you don't need to exceed anything. Legend scares me. If we <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you know what? We'll say a little something about that. Okay. Just just a little something. Okay. Because, um, you know, we've been friends, haven't yes. we, for a little while. Yes. And um, you, you were a bit nervous around me and I couldn't really understand why. At first, yeah, I was Because you terrified. said, well, my reputation precedes me. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, you mean Lazy C? Yes. Oh, okay. But look at you now. You're sitting next to me on the desk and... Well, Vic is a different animal. Oh, okay. I don't know how to go through a bad thing. <laughs> I might have come out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so Nancy's near, as yes. you can all see. Yeah. Um, a, a little boy's not very well. She's taking a little bit of time out. I know, yeah. So you're stepping into the breach. <clears throat> yeah, I've been subbed in. Subbed in. And um, I believe you've got something with you. <laughs> oh, Dale, do you need to see this? Are you ready? I'm right. totally ready. Because every time I come on this podcast or whatever, these two have got laptops. Uh-huh. And they, they look all professional. Yeah, always. So I brought with me my laptop. <laughs> Just open it up there. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's been folded in my bag a little bit, so I don't know if it's going to stay open. In fact, if I put that there. Right, but you need to show the masses the other oh. side, mate. <laughs> right, show you to see this. Right, it's attached. <laughs> What's got me notes on? <laughs> I'd love oh, to show you the welcome. search history on it, but <laughs> that'd scare you. Right, so I just need to highlight something here. <laughs> it looks really good. Actually, oh it's... Oh, my God. Yours is better than mine. It's bigger. I know. It was bigger. It was about this big. And Cherie was like, hey, you need, to, you need to cut that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so Ryan messaged me last night to show me his creation. <laughs> uh, mate, I was howling for at least five minutes. One, because of the ingenuity, but yeah. also your reaction. You were so <laughs> chuffed with yourself. I was. The, the kids were like, can we have a go? I was like, no, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch me, scissors. Right, but... But you know all the times that you've brought up the fact that my notes are rather large, yeah? yeah. Can you just show the masses how large the writing is on that laptop, please? Well, yeah, because I wanted to fill it and make it nice. No, what, it, what camera am I on? But oh, yeah. that, that's bigger than mine. Well, yeah, because I wanted to make use of the space. Oh, okay. I, no. I, did, I didn't think for, like, future episodes I'll have to make a new laptop. But... Are you going to make a new laptop for every episode? Possibly. That means you've got to come back. We'll see about that. Well, we'll see. Just sell tape an apple to the back of it. 
<laughs> I was going to. Interchangeable. Yeah. But but like I, I wanted things to match. So I've, I've gone with the windows. <laughs> I'm loving it. Honest to God. Ingenious, mate. What the fuck? Oh my gosh, right. The difference is, right, mine's just for show. Because I don't use you mine. On it? No, no, I have. I've got my notes on it, oh, but yeah. I can't really see them very well. <laughs> so I've got to print them out as well. Fuck off. I've got to print them out as well. But, oh. you know, if like I lose my way on my notes, I can just scroll my screen. Yeah. So it's like, you know, a double back up. <laughs> okay. I, I feel like you're mocking me. <clears throat> well, to be fair, I don't really need the notes because this is something that happens to me. So I know it quite well, but... <clears throat> oh, okay. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm interested. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Right, we need crack to move on. on. We need on. to move on. A fucking 17 minute intro. It's not a 17 minute intro. Um, 16. Close. Right, so um, before we move on, we do miss our Nance, but I'm yes, delighted to have you back. Thank you. I'm and we're going to have to grown up Ryan today. We're not going to have kindergarten <coughs> Ryan. No. No, no, no. So you're going to sit there like that, like you did in school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so a very quick hello to everybody. Do you know I'm going to say a little hello to our Patreons? I should have had this ready, shouldn't I? Well, there's really? a lot of them now, isn't there? There's loads. Um, they're just like, yeah, every day we're just getting more and more Patreons. So I'm just going to say a very quick hello. I'm, I should have had this ready, shouldn't I? There you go. Uh, so, Delinda, what a nice little name. That's Dylan's yeah. alter ego. Yeah. See, it's Delinda at the weekend. Are <laughs> Del- you, yeah? Delinda of a Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Kayla, she messages me all the time. She's had a tattoo recently. Nice. Yeah. Eleanor uh, and Sophie, they're our latest ones, very latest ones. So hello. Very good. And hello to all the rest of the masses who are listening and watching from all over the place. Thank you very much for joining our chaos. Somebody messaged me, right? <laughs> and he said... Stop putting that screen off with the fucking laptop. <laughs> oh, is that all you can see is your jog laptop? Oh, I'm going to have to pull the fucking gear across. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, before we move on. Oh, do you know what? I did say I wasn't going to do this today and I've already gone off. Right, so <laughs> we walked in today, didn't we? We were on it. We yeah. were sat down and within two minutes. We were ready and look at us. I know, look at us now. We want to be adults so bad. <laughs> look at us now. Just fucking look at us now. <laughs> ruined it. So we walked in today and the gang have put curtains up. Uh, yeah. Haven't they? In the studio. So where we sit here, we can see all the rest of the studio. We see Dylan's lovely face and we can see all sorts. Yeah. But uh, apparently some people quite like to be enclosed a little bit. They've got the you know a bit more privacy to do the podcast yeah. without distraction. Right, love distraction. I do. Yeah. So we decided to keep the curtains open, haven't we? That's so we've got all idea. distraction. But now you can see your laptop on the telly. It's right there. You, and you, you'd miss me giggling. Well, exactly. you just hear it giggles behind the curtain. That's it, yeah. Exactly. I, I like seeing your face. Yeah. And they've also put posh placemats out and we're not using them. Well, they're, they're mine's on my laptop, so. So there you go. I'm going to use my placemats. Okay. Yeah. I forgot what I was saying now. Oh, yeah. So somebody <laughs> messaged me, right, and uh, they said, um, we've noticed that you're saying the C word in full and you're not spelling it out. And I was like, oh, I read the message and I was like, mm, fucking oh. hell. Getting told off here. A few of them are like, I've noticed that you're saying, you're saying cunt quite a lot. And I'm like, well, do you know what? It's like closing the gate after horses bells are really, <laughs> isn't it? I've said it now, so may <laughs> yeah. just carry on. Somebody else uh, messaged me and she said, uh, so we've got this special word for my partner's ex and I am so using it from now on. Mm. So, and I can't say who they are. Okay. For obvious reasons, yeah, yeah. I identify <clears throat> the X, but they call her a Cuntosaurus X. <laughs> <laughs> a Cuntosaurus X. I love that. Don't you just love that? <clears throat> so that is so, so going to be used from now on. Yeah, that, that's like a step <clears throat> above. I'm cunt, sure my it? ex doesn't watch this. Uh, for some of his family members, mice, and uh, he's a Contosaurus X. So there you go. <laughs> Feel free to pass that on. Yeah, pass the message on. Not a problem at all. And uh, there's a lovely little review on Facebook um, by a lady called Donna. And I think it's dead funny because uh, Donna obviously wants her five minutes of fame. Because okay. at the bottom of the review, she said, uh, give us a shout out. <laughs> yeah, presumptuous. <clears throat> But her review says, incredibly offensive and where needs be addressed correctly. The best podcast and only podcast I've ever been glued to. <laughs> but then hashtag glue. I don't know why there's a hashtag glue. Is, is glue a big oh. hashtag or something? Oh, is that a thing? 
I don't know. Gluing. Maybe if she's trying yeah. to start her own hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to do that, you know. She might just be a glue ad. I've been trying to start some of my own hashtags. Could, could be a, a different fetish. A glue, a glue fetish. fetish. A Is glue that a fetish. thing? Have you ever heard of that before? What could I do with a glue fetish? Just tip glue on someone and then peel it off. <gasps> Oh, God, in school, is. PVA glue on there your hand and then peel it off. Did you oh, used to do that? Yeah. Oh. It's a fetish. Honestly, um, in art class, certified. I'd, I'd be like, <laughs> first thing I'd do is spread PVA glue on my hand, let it dry while Miss was talking. And then once it would be dry, like that. Yeah. Oh, and then see all your, your hand prints on the PVA glue. Yeah. Not did you used to do that? Glue. Did you used to do that, Dylan? Of course I did. The feeling of a peel. Are you like a skin peeler when somebody oh, burns? Yeah. I don't understand why people don't like that. I know. I love doing that. Oh, I love it. Anyway, Donna's review. Sorry, Donna. <laughs> Hashtag glue. <laughs> Hashtag glue. So anyway, the best and only podcast is being glued to hashtag glue. Townhouse, referring to the venue that me and Jim own, if you haven't watched previous episodes, Townhouse is the best and unrivaled club by far. Ten years later, and I am I now have the delight of listening to a podcast from the owners and staff directly. Anytime, any day. Amazing. When I thought my boots um, had been filled every night at Townhouse, my boots are now overflowing with the delicious outcomes of this podcast. <coughs> That's nice. Highly rated. <coughs> Give us a shout out, Vicky and Nance. I'm sure she <laughs> loves you too. I'm sure she did. She didn't mention you in person, but yeah. I'm sure she loves you too. I pour glue over you, Donna. Ooh. Mm. Mm. I thought you weren't into that kind of stuff. Or are we making you into... Glue's different. Glue's different, I, I is I get it? into glue. Would you? <laughs> I'm interested. You're going to make this into a fetish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just me and a pot of glue. <laughs> <laughs> glue knife for the club. Neil Buchanan. There's <laughs> 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 one I made oh earlier. Oh my God, I'm just imagining a fetish night now. Hey, I'm halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> just need the head. <laughs> Dylan can be the head. Oh my God. I still love his show. Uh, what was that called? Heart attack. heart attack. No, it wasn't it heart was. attack. The heart attack. Oh, heart. I was going to say heart attack. <laughs> that's, that's a fucking kids show. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> CPR. Yeah. Fucking hell. Oh, heart attack, that's right, yeah. Anyway. So, what, where am we up to? What am I doing? Yes, so, I don't know. Have you seen our previous episode that went out just on th- yesterday? No, I haven't watched it yet. Fucking hell, Ryan. This should know. be your homework. I, I haven't had you a You should chance. be up to date, so when we come to record, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah. you don't, do you? No. So I started a couple of new little segments, and one is like on this day or history or oh, week Oh, okay, sound, yeah. So one well, of the last ones I did, it was like International Toast Day. I know, I know, I don't know why there's a day for international toast. every day in our house. Yeah. Uh, so I was looking for, for stuff, and I found out that this is going out on the 14th of March, right? Okay. Albert Einstein and Michael Caine have got their birthday on the 14th of March. But I don't, I, mean, I know Albert Einstein like, you know, changed the world, but I don't think they're interested enough for me to go on about. No. <coughs> Michael Everybody Caine's good, about, isn't he? Yeah. I like Michael Caine. But the 14th of March, I happen to find out, is also uh, the day of a festival. And it's called the Frozen Dead Guy Festival. And you know, when you see something, it just speaks to you. And this belongs on our podcast. This, this better be a good story That's because I'm liking it. Well, it's a fucking amazing story. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So this little segment was going to be, guess what, on this day, or it's International Week of, it wasn't supposed to be a full segment, but this is so bloody good, I'm making a full segment out of it. Go for it. So the Frozen Dead Guy mm-hmm. Festival. Do you think, have a little guess of what it could be about. <clears throat> Glue? No. <laughs> is it about a man who died... And he's frozen. Well, aren't you a fucking genius? There's a bit more to it than that, but at the centre of the Frozen Dead Guy Festival, funny enough, is a frozen dead guy. Is it the same dead guy every year? Yeah. Yeah, he's just, they don't he's get a just new one. been <laughs> frozen for a very, very long time. Would you like to know more? Yes. Are you intrigued, Dylan? I'm very intrigued. Is he like a Neanderthal? Yeah, I'll he's try and guess old. what country it's in before she says it. Iceland. No. I'm going to say... You're not going to get it. No. Huh? Norway. Mm, oh, actually, do you know, no, no. <clears throat> but I'm the close. story starts <clears throat> in Norway very okay. briefly. Okay. Very, very briefly. Would you like to know more? Yes, okay. very much so. <clears throat> Let me get my giant notes ready. <laughs> so, 
Since 2000 and si- Stop blocking! You cheating! It's a fucking tree's worth of notes. Fuck off. These fucking yellow pages. There's some people watching this that won't know what the yellow pages are. Oh, don't. Mm. So, <sighs> since 2002, mm-hmm. people have been gathering in Colorado, mm-hmm. participating okay. in coffin races, zombie pub crawls and <clears throat> ice plungers, all in honour of a dead guy who's been frozen in a shed for over 30 years. Fucking hell. Frozen in a shed. Nice. So let's just take a step back because when I first read that, I'm like, why is there some guy frozen in a shed of all places? And how? How's he frozen in a shed for 30 years? <clears throat> but this festival, it goes in every year and they do mad, mad, mad shit. I, I don't really think it's got any relevance. It's like, <laughs> do you know what? There's this like vague, vague sort of theme about a dead guy and we're going to make this massive festival out of it because why not? Yeah. Why not? Other people, when they want to honour somebody, they might have like a statue or some sort of commemorative, or a stamp. <clears throat> a bench. A stamp. Your bench. No, these guys have created a whole four-day festival of like dead-themed uh, activities. <laughs> and the people that go to this thing are completely fucking nuts. And they're all kind of people. It sounds like, And at yeah. the end of it, at the first, I was like, this is just crazy. At the end of it, I'm like, yeah, want to go. I'd go. No problem at all. But why? So in 1989, this Norwegian guy, there's oh, another name that I can't pronounce. Just give him an English one. <sighs> okay, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, Trygve. Trygve. Yeah, okay, it spells T-R-Y-G-V-E. Yeah. Trygve. Trygve. Bauge. So I'm going to call him Trevor because yeah, Trygve is just too much. <clears throat> His granddad died. In 1989. And him, along with his mum, decided to take the corpse over to the United States and um, f- uh, preserve him. And they took him over on dry ice. Okay. And when he arrived, they put him in liquid nitrogen at this um, cryo cryogenics yeah, facility yeah, yeah. in um, somewhere in California that I can't say. And he was there until 1993. Mm-hmm. I does it's not clear whether this guy actually wanted to be cryogenically frozen. <laughs> I think he just died and his grandson thought, Do you know what? He's a clever guy. He shouldn't be dead. He, he, you know, we could reanimate him one day. Well let's let's freeze him just in case. But I don't think he's consented to this shit. No. Bearing <clears throat> in mind that this guy is, is still preserved to this day. I don't think with consent there's a whole <laughs> festival. In honour of him. And I don't think he agreed to this shit. There's no way to say. He said, look, lad, Trev, when I die, (laughs) I want to be frozen and I want this festival all right. So saucy. I don't think he did that. It was just his grandson. Anyway, in 1993, um, they they decided that to take him away from this place in California. And he was uh, returned to dry ice and transported to a town in Colorado called Nederland. I think it's called Nederland. N-E-D-E. R-L-A-N-D. I'm going to call it Nederland. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, the the guy, um, he, he resided with his daughter and his grandson in this shed in the back of this unfinished house in Colorado <laughs> on dry ice. And every fortnight, these volunteers would trek up to this house and take out the dry ice that wasn't frozen anymore and replace it with more dry ice. For 30 years, Roy. What the fuck? And these guys in Colorado that were volunteering Uh, to do this, they didn't know the dead guy. They didn't know him. His name, by the way, is Bredo, the dead guy. Bredo. Bredo. In my head, I was calling him Fredo. Fredo, Fredo. (laughs) Bredo. They didn't know him, but they dedicated 30 years every fortnight to go and replace his dry ice just Uh, to make sure he stayed frozen for no particular reason. That was mental. It's mad the things that people get on board with. Isn't it? It's complete strangers are like, yeah, I'll volunteer to I'll keep my that, nice. Yeah. yeah, well, I've nothing best to do. So there wow. he stayed, but Trevor um, was um, basically um, told to leave America. Um, his visa had run out, so he was deported. Mm. And his ma, whose name was Ord, I'm thinking it's short for Audrey, Ord. Uh, she was also told that she'd be evicted from her home because she'd been living without electricity and plumbing for all these years and they were violating local rules basically she was found guilty of uh, like building regulations and zoning violations and basically keeping her stiff on dry ice without permission 
basically. So they said, you're going to have to remove the body and deport him. We're not happy with this. So, but the locals um, decided that, no, that, that wasn't fair. It's not, it's not the dead dude's fault, you know. And, yeah. you know, by the time he gets back to Norway, he could have, like, defrosted and then all these 30 years yeah, of being yeah. wasted. So um, the, the local town made an exception and allowed him to stay. And the mother. I don't know what happened to Trev. I think he's he's gone and hasn't come back, to be yeah. honest with you. And this um, this company called Delta Tech, this environmental company, stepped in and they agreed to maintain this uh, cryogenic facility to keep him frozen. No way. Yeah. And they built a new shed. <laughs> <laughs> they so built a new shed, shed for Bredo. Well. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so he was there until very recently, last year. And this is where the story sort of twists a little bit and what I quite I like I like about it. Have you heard of the Stanley Hotel? Uh, yeah. The Stanley Hotel uh, was the inspiration for Stephen King's novel The Shining. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in this area called the Estes Park in Colorado. Now, the Stanley um, Hotel was not doing very well. It, you know, suffering after COVID and all that. Yeah. And the owner, the CEO, um, got onto the story of Bredo being frozen and said, uh, Hey, Ord, I don't suppose, uh, you know, if, if I was to put him up, <laughs> would you mind if we transported Bredo from the shed to the hotel? Because I think he'd be a great little exhibit. Fuck it. And she agreed to <clears> it. <throat> if, if Dad is now an exhibit... A in hotel. this hotel. So he was transported, yes, again, on dry ice. This guy's been on dry <laughs> ice more he's than fucking, anything. He's fucking travelled more while he's been dead. Yeah. <clears throat> and then he was transported to liquid nitrogen and now he's a permanent exhibit. And so people are travelling from all over the place. I don't know if they can actually see him. I was trying to find yeah, a photograph yeah. of him on dry ice. I was going to say, have you got a photo? Like that. That's how I'm visit. Like, like it's that. He's not just yeah. like, yeah. He's got to be, hasn't he? He's going to be on dry ice. You can't just be... No, that's you know, looking dead. That's boring. You've got to be like, oh, yeah. something like that, haven't you? You know, <laughs> that's the thumbnail sorted. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you die when you're frozen. Oh. Well, do you know, if I don't die like that, it'd be quite cool if somebody turned you before I, I went hard. Yeah, if somebody like did that, <laughs> like that in an open casket. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> oh, that, that's it, uh, yeah. That's it. Uh... <laughs> and Nancy right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, more apt. <laughs> that wasn't it. The karate chaps. Yeah. If you haven't seen our Patreon, you need to go and see oh, the Patreon so you can to. work out what that's about. Yeah. So, yeah, so this poor guy is now an exhibit. But there's this festival. And the festival used to be, uh, I can't remember where it was, somewhere in the general area. And it was moved to Estes Park, right by the Stanley Hotel. So oh, the guys okay. that do this festival have also cashed in on the dead dude. And they've moved it near. So, that, so you can go to the festival and you can go and see um, well. Bredo, the dead dude, on ice in the hotel. Yeah. So it's like a little package. Right? Package deal, yeah. <clears throat> so that's the history of this thing. And that's like the big part of the story, really. But I also want to talk a bit about the festival as well, because you just, you can't not really, can you? No. So I don't know how many people descend, but when I've seen the photos, it looks like a lot. And people travel from all over the place. <clears throat> and it feels like nobody's really questioning why this festival started. Nobody's saying who and why. Who thought of this thing? Why are you doing it? Uh, oh, that's a nice little tinkle in the background. Is that your phone? Apologies. How unprofessional was that then? It's I might have to complain. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. I'm, I'm not distracted very easily. I can just work Same. through that. Well, we're definitely not going to talk about But I'm acknowledging it because, you know, I'm going to get into trouble. Oh, look at him oh, now. He's shit. He's shitting himself. <laughs> He's like, can I edit that out? <laughs> so. <laughs> I have to keep it in now, right? You do, you do, but it's absolutely We've fine. We've it enough. It's absolutely fine. We won. I've grassed him up completely to his boss now. <laughs> so, but why? Why are people doing festivals like this? I just don't get it. I've got no answer. It's to do. If you're expecting an answer, there isn't one. But if you want to know more about this, there's a website and it's called the Frozen Dead Guy Days.com <laughs> website, right? Creative name. The gallery, it just gives you a wonderful insight into the crazy people that organise this thing and the people that attend. It's not for wallflowers or introverts. This is, an, uh, this is a festival for full 
throttle crazy people. And lunatics. The pictures, right, I am just going to get me lappy because I need to tell Dylan about some of the pictures that I'm going to ask him to, to get up on the screen. <laughs> forgot about that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I had pictures. So, <clears throat> yeah, the pictures, it just shows you all the costumes people wear and stuff like that. Um, and the first thing that they do, it's actually on the 14th of March this year, so it's very apt. Okay. Yeah. And it's a zombie pub crawl. And uh, on the website, it uh, says that people are encouraged to wear zombie attire <laughs> and they literally go on a pub crawl all around the Estes area. But what I love about this, thank you, Dylan, this is a map of the area and there's all little zombies along the trail so you yeah, can actually yeah, yeah, see yeah. where all the pubs are. I think it's a little That's boss nice. zombies. <clears throat> that is good. It's all on brand, you know, frozen yeah, yeah, dead yeah. guy, be, yeah. zombies. I just love it. So that was interesting. A lot of pubs, and, isn't it? Pardon? It's a lot of pubs. It is a lot of pubs, yeah. And then uh, the other thing that I quite liked about that was the um, zom zombie pub, pub crawl bar list. <laughs> right? So there's like little, uh, the brain freeze, the no. cryo ranger. I love that, the cryo but ranger. The necrophiliac. <laughs> 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 so we've escalated very quickly from a frozen dead guy to necrophilia. No way. Like, okay. Mean, and then the six feet under old fashioned drink. Yeah. So there's loads of little quirks like this around the website, which I thought worked really nicely. All like I say, all on brand. And then they have this thing called the Royal Blue Ball. And this is set in the Stanley Hotel. You have to pay a bit extra for it. Yeah. But there's a competition for the best dressed Grandpa Bredo. This is the guy who's... who's no. Yeah. So I'm like, <clears throat> so they, do they dress in Grandpa Bredo's like, attire when he was alive? Or is he a stiff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Like, yeah. going back to that again. So if we go to the pics... Oh, I've, I've got a pic of that. Hang on a minute. Um, it might be a mid-download. I might not have actually given this to uh, to Dylan. But there's uh, a pic of... Oh, no, I haven't. Right, I'm just going to show it to you. I'm just going to show it to you. So there's a pic of some people on the dress as Grandpa Abrazo and, and they're looking like dead and icy and stuff. And then there's this other <laughs> pic, and I'm sorry I haven't given it to Dylan, but I, I will pass it over, right? So I'm going to show it to Ryan first. So there's all these oh people here dressed. In, and there's this guy with no makeup on or nothing. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> show it to the camera. So you can see there's like people dressed in like um, dead zombie attire here. And then there's a yeah. fella in the middle. And he's not really dressed as anything at all. He's got no face makeup on or anything. And he didn't get the, the remit, obviously. So rather than dress up, he's put on his like, his face is like... <laughs> His face, his face, <laughs> yes. because he's thinking, it's shit. frozen face. <laughs> yeah. I'm in a picture here that's going to go on social media and I haven't dressed up. Has he got an axe on his hand? Don't he's got like, right. yeah, but you can't quite see it. <laughs> yeah, Somebody yeah, else yeah. is hiding it. But they go all out with the costumes. And it says that the people that are best dressed and that get a prize, doesn't say what the prize is. Yeah. I'm hoping it's a really good prize, but it could be shit. So it says at this thing, right, there's a, a band and they're called Here Come the Mummies. <laughs> Okay, so we have got a picture. It's Here Come the Mummies. Uh, they look good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Are they all the band members? They're all the band members. There's 10 of them. So when I first read this, I'm like, this sounds cheesy as shit because it says, this 10-piece band of 5,000-year-old Egyptian mummies promises terrifying funk from beyond the grave. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> terrifying funk from beyond the grave. But I watch them on YouTube. They're really, really good. Are they? Yeah. They what have like saxophones <clears throat> and all that going on. And I have actually got a picture, Dylan. It's Here Come the Mummies 1. There oh, you go, look. Oh, they look brilliant. It's a tenor saxophone and he's properly rocking it out. Uh, that's courtesy of Chris Lawrence photography. Um, <laughs> but what a great picture. Nice one, Chris. But they're so good, even though they've like they're wrapped in like bandages and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, really yeah, yeah. funk it out and the crowd were going nuts for it. Love that. And uh, they've actually played like as a backing band to some really, really big groups around America. Oh, so right. at first I'm like, they should have chosen a different name, but it's obviously their unique selling points. Yeah. And they <clears> absolutely <throat> rock it. And when you see the audience, they're fucking going oh, for it. Are, yeah. yeah. And in all of their dead garb. <laughs> fucking brilliant it was. <clears throat> so that is the, the blue ball with the here come the mummies thing, right? So it doesn't stop there. The main event is on day three. 
And mm -hmm. this is, uh, they call it the Frozen Dead Guy Days Festival. And there's all sorts of things. There's some like paid activities, some free activities. And they do this thing, this ice plunge. Oh, yeah. And I have got a picture there, Dylan. <gasps> it's, it's Frozen me. Dead Guy's Ice Plunge picture. There's number one, there's the, yeah, there you go. So oh, they actually yeah. cut out the ice yeah. on the day so people can actually see it mm. being cut out. Now, it is actually quite thick, but I don't, for me, I'd be like, oh, it's going to crack. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. So they cut this thing out and people are, are invited to just come and jump in this I'd thing because why not? Well, I'm going to ask you about this a bit because why not, right? So people don't just jump in. Because, you know, this is the Frozen Dead Guy Festival. Yeah. They dress up. So number one on that, Dylan. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Batman and Robin are jumping in. So at first, right, I was like, so they're shit costumes, aren't they? I was like, they're just pyjamas with a cape. Yeah. Right. But then I realised I was being a bit of a cunt. Got a father and son outfit, isn't it? Yeah. See, he's a little, he's a, he's a kid. I thought that was a woman at first. I think it, oh, I thought shit. that was a... Oh, I, I, I feel I can see a little package around the groin area. His hands I'm, there. Oh, no one they've done the dad. Yeah, that's obviously a dad. I'm on about the other one. Oh, I thought you were looking at the. I okay. thought that was his missus. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I think that's his son. I think it's his Is son. It? So anyway, so I was slagging off the outfits, going, e, "He's just wearing his pajamas." But that's a father and son thing. Uh, I thought I felt a little bit bad about that. But he's going for it there, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's going deep. Batman there. is really, really going for Batman's it. Batman's going deep. Right, but we've got one here. And if you go to the next one, uh, Dylan, uh, it's called Belly Flop. Look at oh. this. So this idiot... He's, he's not only jumping into frozen water, but he's belly flopping into it. Can you imagine the pain, man? Yeah. The pain. Yeah, that's got that stingy cold there. And they don't get nothing for this. Oh, they just no, get the just, glory. It's fun, isn't it? It's, so you'd do this for the glory? I'd do it for uh, humour reasons and probably attention. Yeah, I can see you do that for attention. I don't need attention that bad. There's just no yeah, way. Yeah. No way. You'd no, see me I on would. the zombie pub crawl. You have can you, do that. Have you seen the uh, the belly flop Olympics? No. Oh, you need to YouTube. Have you seen it, though? No. One moment. So people will go to like a high board and you know, like the way professional divers No, not like a 10 foot one. No, no. In. But these guys just jump off and belly flop. And it's, I think the winner is determined by whoever can do the biggest splash. It's fucking oh, yeah. hilarious. No, that's not a belly flop. No, belly flop Olympics you want. Belly flop Olympics. Let me yeah. It. Right. So it's that's got to hurt. I mean, it hurts when you do it by accident from the side from the of the pool. the pool. It does. So people are, are purposely belly flopping from 10 foot high. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Watch some of these. Why though? That's got to hurt. <laughs> yeah, watch. <laughs> yeah, so, so Norwegians take part in death diving belly flop challenge. It, it's fucking hilarious, some of them. Oh, no. There he goes. No. No. <gasps> oh my god! What a splash! <laughs> There's one guy who just runs all the way in. No, I mean this is a sport he's not I'm even, built for. He's not even winded. No, you'd no, think no. that you'd be winded, yeah. wouldn't you? <gasps> what? <laughs> Norwegians were civilised people. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong? That's got give, to... Give, give them a dive. That'd mold. wind me. I'd just sink to the bottom. Oh, I'd need to be pulled me. out with one of them hooks. <laughs> <laughs> or, or just like a, a hoop, a net. <laughs> <laughs> Fish me out. Oh, my God. Okay. So, something else, hadn't it? Yeah. Oh, whoa, that that just gazumps this. I mean, he's doing that <laughs> yeah, from like. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, that's now. actually my topic. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that that's gonna hurt. Okay, where was I? This idiot. <sighs> yeah, so they do this ice plunge thing for nothing but the glory. No prize, no nothing. Just spectators egging <laughs> them all on. Yeah, I'd love that. Are you a bit of an attention seeker? I'd a little bit, yeah. Right, <laughs> haven't you been doing the? Um, the plunge poop thing. You've got one of them yeah, plunge things one, at home, yeah. haven't you? We got um well not anymore because the dog chewed it, but oh. um The so, dog chewed it big. Yeah. You've only got a little dog and it chewed that up. Yeah, well there's a step fishery because she couldn't get anywhere without a step. Because <laughs> so, she's little. Yeah. <laughs> so the dog had to stand on the step, but like because the top ring's inflatable, he's just gone and it. 
So yeah, no no more ice plungers, but it was good for a week. <laughs> it was good. Right, I, I, well, I'm glad that it, um, it, it lasted a week. I didn't yeah, think it would last a week. I've, when you show me the picture, I'm like, yeah, one day, mate. Yeah. Uh, I got up to about four or five minutes at a time, innit? Wow. Wow. And then just got out because I was bored, really. I just wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't do it. I'd Simple love to as see that. You in one of them. Simple as that. So we've got this other thing, right? And uh, I was supposed to send these pictures over to Dylan, and I haven't. I don't know why. I'm really, really sorry, Dylan. I thought I was organised. And... Don't you worry, Becky. So I don't know whether they're going to be in my thing here either. So there's this other thing. It's called the coffin race. And um, there's strict rules to the coffin race. And I'm just going to bring it up online. So people need to make a coffin from scratch. It has four sides and it has to be a, a certain length and width. Mm -hmm. There has to be six pole bearers around it and they need to be as creative as possible. So there needs to be like themes and stuff like that. I fucking that. love the sound of this place. I know, isn't it? It's bloody fucking brilliant. So, um, they're, they're dead inventive in what they do here and um, they have to go around a course in like twos and then there's heat. So whoever wins that one goes on to the next one. Got you. There's got to be a corpse on the inside, a living <laughs> corpse, not a dead corpse. So you need a team of seven. And <clears throat> the corpse and all six pole bearers have got to make it to the end of the course got to you. win. Okay. And they have to go over obstacles and stuff oh. like that. They go through water, they go over hay bales and all that kind of thing. And when you watch it, Ryan, they are so competitive and they take it dead serious. Really, yeah. Either the dress as adult babies and stuff like that. <laughs> They're like, like flexing and everything. Is it like the Red Bull soapbox yes, thing? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, but they were flexing. The way, the way you were when we were doing that um, toilet yoga. <laughs> nice. I'm at, Dylan, I am very quick. Oh, I can't send them over to you because I haven't got Wi-Fi. I'm just going to show them on the screen. Yeah, I've got them. You've got them. Oh, oh there, you go. there you go. <laughs> Look at the face of the fella in the coffin. <laughs> Jailbreak. <laughs> this himself. is why I chose this one because the rest of them are determined and, and the, the corpse is like, whoa, I'm actually going to die. Yeah. This is like my last day on earth. That right. fella in the front, he's, he's pulling that, isn't yeah. he? He's uh, keep up with me. So we've also, have you got the other one, Dylan? <laughs> Look at well, him in the back. I've, the I've just on. got You've one. only got that one. Okay, so I am now going to show you another team. <laughs> Right, and I'll send this over to Dylan so he can flash it up on YouTube for us. So this is a team uh, before they actually start. <laughs> so they're dressed up as like adult babies of some kind. Right? Yeah, they look like nurses. There's no nurses. No, they're like little little dresses. He actually looks like like something that we know, it's, but I can't say who it it's is. It's like the twins from The Shining. That's what they're wearing. <laughs> Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Why didn't I get onto that? It is, isn't it? What a fucking knobhead. Okay. <laughs> so they are the dressed as the twins from The Shining. And then you can see them um, actually running and, and they're going for it. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. Yeah. So you actually see them running. It's really good. I want to have a go at this. So um, anyway, there is prizes for this. Again, it doesn't say what the prizes are. I think it's probably just a bit, a bit of shit, like a bit of a... a bit of glory, isn't it? A bit of glory. Just a trophy yeah. or something like that. But um, I, I think that that is a lot, a lot of fun and I would do the, the coffin run for certain. I wouldn't I'd, do the ice plunge, but I'd definitely do the, the coffin run. The whole festival sounds fucking boss. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So there's some other little bits and bobs that they do as well. Um, they do this dead leprechaun Paddy's Day party because it runs over Paddy's Day. Okay. They do a, a thick and thawed uh, burlesque show. Burr. Get it? Love, Cold. Love Burr. Star. I love yeah. it. And a psychic reading show uh, in the main theatre. Again, all on brand. Dead. Psychic reading. Of course. All that. So it costs $47 for the main um, festival that, that one day. In. Yeah. Or you can do the whole thing, the Royal Blue Ball, the main festival, and all the other activities for around $140. Mm. So four days, you know, I think. That's quite good, isn't it? I, I think I'd, I'd pay $140 for four days yeah. of crazy shit. Would you dress up? Yeah. You'd what have you, to. What would you dress up as? Uh, well, if we were doing the coffin race. Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to come back to you on that. Okay. Me and you could dress up as the twins. I think that'd be great. I think we could. Yeah, we we'll pull that off. I'd like well, to we, see you we, in the do dress. Do we just go typical British and all turn up in England kits? 
Oh, no. I thought you were going to say not the tanky, you said. No, but like the old England kits. Yeah, shit that. It needs to be better than this. They're outrageous, yeah, right? Come on. To be fair, right? I'm like, Irish, Ryan. Yeah. It's, it's, that'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether it would be funny. <laughs> Do you know your history? <laughs> well, we're, we're going Ireland kits then. Yeah. Because I'm half Irish, so. Do you know what I've just thought about something? You know, because I always go off on mum. Talking about trophies and awards and stuff. I was reading something recently. This is going completely off piste. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You know, I'm like, yes. I was reading something about Emma Thompson recently, you know, the award winning actress. Yes. Yeah. Love her. I think she's quirky as fuck. And uh, she's got one of her BAFTA awards in her bathroom. She's just sitting there. One yeah. of them sitting in the bathroom in, and there's a mirror there. And she leaves it there in the hopes that while people are having a slash or the <laughs> washing their hands, <laughs> slash go for a wee. Um, while they're washing their hands, they pick up the trophy, or the trophy, pick up the BAFTA and uh, practice the, the, an the wrist. Do yeah. I would. <laughs> I, I would. I'd do it while pissing. Would you? <laughs> Just, I can piss one under, can't you? I know you can because you voiced it to me <laughs> while you've been pissing me. Every time. And you piss like a racehorse. <laughs> Have you actually farted down the down the voice note yet? I can't remember. I think I'd probably remember it. One's probably slipped out, yeah. Yeah. A silent but deadly, maybe. I did, no, mine are never silent. Aren't they? No. Are you vol- yours are voluminous. Volatile. Yeah. That is not. That is not. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so okay. Is that the full full? No, it? no. It's like a little warning that we're nearly there. That's the 40 minute mark warning. Fucking hell. That's not 40 minutes. We didn't start till like, I don't know, quarter to, ten to. Yeah, it's 20 past. Shite. Okay. You've got a watch on. I'm not even looking at it. Right, okay. So I'm going to do a quick middle bit and then you can talk about and we might we might go on a little bit. But you know, that's, that's just the way I'm rolling. Times that's just the way I'm rolling. So my little middle bit today. Oh, there's two middle bits. Very quick one. So, you know, since Nance and I uh, were hurling shit at each other, as I know, yes. in 1955, it feels like that long ago. <laughs> episode, it was an early episode. episode whatever it was, yeah. yeah. It seems that people think that we just love anything to do with shit, and I don't. But, you know, funny, thanks, though. thanks. So somebody, and, and they also saw in a previous episode that I had um, a support pickle. Do you remember this? If you, watch, you haven't fucking watched it, have you? Dude. You hide behind that giant laptop. Oh, I'm so pickle. disappointed. Yeah. I'm disappointed. Yeah, it's the support, yeah. Okay, so I brought the support pickle on. But somebody sent me um, a positive poo. <laughs> and it's a crocheted positive poo. What's it say on it? It says, I may be tiny, I, I, I may be a tiny poo, but I believe in you. Go do your shit. Hey, that's quite good, that. I love it. Is that staying in the house or is that going to the club? I don't know whether I might have it on the desk. It's a little mascot, a little shit mascot. I like that, yeah. He's but visible. Like. People are sending me all this. Honestly, I've got other things to show on, on later episodes <laughs> and they generally have a shit theme <laughs> and they're all different people that are sending them to me. It doesn't mean you can send me more shit stuff, by the way. But if it's if it's inventive like that, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. I'll have a whole desk full of stuff that people have sent me. We like creative poos. Yeah. Right, do you know what? I'm not going to do this middle bit now. I'm going to leave it till next time. Okay. What have you got for us, right? Can I have a go? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want a little bit, it's all right. Right, it's fine. Um, mine wasn't a massive bit anyway. Um, but I wanted to talk about sexomnia. Okay. You heard of it? I have. Know about it? Um, and there's a good reason why I know about it, a little bit about it. I, I don't really know whether I should divulge this. Okay. Okay. I mean, I've said loads of other things about Jim. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be about him, would it? Otherwise, you'd have said it. <laughs> Go on. So, um, yeah, sleep sex, basically. Yeah. Having sex with someone in your sleep and being totally fucking unaware of it. So, okay, just to clarify, you're asleep, but the other person can be asleep or awake. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go on. Yeah, and it's um, it's closely linked to sleepwalking and sleep talking yes. and stuff like that. Obviously, it's the higher you know the end real of the word scale. for sleepwalking. Uh, parasomnia. No. Parasomnias. No, that a parasomnia thing is generally weird shit you do in your sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sleepwalking, somnambulism. Somnambulism. I don't know why I remember that. I can't remember having my tea last night, and that's just popped in me. Head. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, go on. No, it's all right. It, it's strange word. Though, somnambulism. Isn't it? Some. Yeah. Go on. 
Somnambulism. Somnambulism. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's linked to sleepwalking, sleep talking, but it's sleep dragon. And I, I've done it a few times where we, we've come down in the morning and, you know, gave the kids the breakfast. They've gone in the living room. We've stayed in the kitchen and she's been like, last night was unreal. Yeah, mind blowing sex. Yeah, I'd be like, why, where did you go? <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened? <laughs> why, what, what, what the fuck happened? We, we watched a few TikToks in bed when we went to sleep. She's like, no, what the fucking the sex we had. <laughs> Wasn't me. Wow. <laughs> Wasn't me. So you can't remember <clears throat> anything about this at all. No, there's, there's been there's been times where I've woke up halfway through and been like, "What the fuck's happening here?" Like half thought and it was balls a dream. Balls deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Balls deep. Going shit. What happened here? Yeah. So like we it, it it happened enough for us to be like, it's ov- it's obviously something. Mm. So like we researched it and we come back with wow. this and we we were looking into it and stuff. Um, but apparently it only, it only happens to about 8% of people, but they can't go off that figure because a lot of people won't say they've got it because yeah. it's... Or they don't know. Or they, then again, the partner would know, wouldn't they? Well, that maybe the partner doesn't know any difference. Maybe she's just there taking it and loving it. And and doesn't say the next day that was amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, one of the things online was like, no one wants to go to the doctors over it because it's embarrassing. Where did they come from? Why does it start? Um, this... <laughs> There's loads of triggers linked to it again, but there's not enough research on it because not a lot of people have come forward with it. But it's things like uh, stress, anxiety, depression, sleep deprivation, drugs, alcohol, sort of abuse. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've noticed it myself, um, especially like when I'm stressed over something, that's when it tends to happen. Like if if, if I'm getting like a load of shit night's sleep. Mm. And it it makes sense to be fair because you must pass out and sleep that Mm. hard. You get hard. Well, maybe, yeah, yeah. That your subconscious is just like, I want sex. It doesn't matter. You stay asleep. I'll sort of it's out. It's funny, isn't it? Because we know hormones come into play mm-hmm. when you're horny. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder what it is about the sleep deprivation and all that stress that's making those hormones come forth and do their thing. I, I think the hormones are just there naturally. But I think because of the lack of sleep, say like, course of three days or something like that I've had like two to four hours sleep over them three days I must just fall asleep that fucking hard and go into such a deep like REM sleep and you just you, you just stay asleep that, isn't it? mad but they said the um, causes or, or things it's linked to or that you might have um, sleepwalking sleep apnea chronic insomnia restless leg syndrome which I've got narcolepsy which I haven't got and uh, bruxism just grinding your teeth okay that's so cool. I, I've, I've got I grind my teeth in my sleep and restless leg syndrome I've got as well um, yeah. so you don't remember any of this at all no unless I wake up like halfway through you just it. feel a little bit lighter yeah <laughs> <bit. laughs> <laughs> but no like genuinely I can come down in the morning with no recollection of it whatsoever okay so I've got some questions go on so you achieve orgasm I don't know but does, does Shireen not tell you I should have asked her really, shouldn't I? <laughs> but yeah, I imagine so. I, I I imagine so. Right, okay, I need to know. Do you need to ask her? Okay, I'll text you. Okay. <laughs> and so does she know that you're asleep sometimes? She does now. You see, I think that's a little bit kinky. Yeah. It's like I'm having a little sneaky shag. He doesn't know about it. Yeah. And, and I can be very takey because mm. he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. So I'm just going to lie here and, and enjoy it. And then he doesn't even need to know the next morning. Well, and then when I demand sex again the next day, you can't say, you only had it last night. Yeah. <laughs> I'll well, be using this to my advantage this a, a lot you. of the time. Because she, she always mentions it the next day. She'll be like, you and your fucking sleep last night. Like, um, I was reading online and it can be like, it doesn't have to be full sex. It can just be instigating it. And then like, okay. once you've woke up enough to realise what's going on, you're like, oh, fuck, I'm going to sleep. Oh, but, so you don't want to carry on? So sometimes it's like, I've been like, grabbing her, stroking her, whatever, like trying to get her in the mood. And then once she is, I've sort of woke up a little bit and I'm like, well, why the fuck am I awake? And just like roll over and go to sleep. Is it something to do with like horny dreams that you're having maybe? I don't know. And I, like reenacting them out? I, I don't dream. So I've got no you recollection of that. I can never remember it if I've dreamt. Um, but yeah, so it can be that. You, you, you can build it up so much. And then obviously that's happening while you're asleep. So you've got no fucking idea what you've been doing. But to hear... 
I've just spent the last 15 minutes trying to get her in the mood. And now you And then just rolled over and gone to sleep. I'd be fuming. I'd be <laughs> like, oh no. I would make sure that you could not get back to sleep. Yeah. I'd be putting my curls feet on you and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but terrible, but like the, a corpse feet. But the best thing I, I, I was reading, um, like at, at the end of the page, it was like how to cope with sexomnia. It was like sleep in separate rooms, um, <laughs> lock the door on the separate rooms. Um, one, one was saying... Um, wear a uh, like a movement body alarm so like if you start moving too much I was like fucking hell Tony sex well I mean I've got another suggestion chastity device no I'm alright I've, I've even got a silicone one nice and comfortable that'll keep you locked in no, I'm alright that'll keep the little fucker locked in <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really good at hog ties well no she enjoys it I wouldn't want to take the enjoyment I'm away from her I think she really enjoys a hog tie I'm like <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Wow. So when you've been doing this and you don't know, and the next day she's like, "My God, that was amazing," and you're like, "I'm yep. even good in my sleep." Yep. <laughs> Are you like, do you feel refreshed, like you had a good sleep, or do you feel like tired because you've been working through your sleep? But like, I always feel tired anyway. Like I have done for about six years. So there's, there's, there's kids there's, in it. Yeah, there's no. Uh, I can't wow. feel anything there. Wow. I always feel tired. How often has this happened? A good few times, like, Has it? yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good few times. And as I say, once it, looking back now, now that I've seen that it's linked with restless legs and uh, grinding your teeth, when I've had nights of grinding my teeth, or it, it, it's always been one point at, at that night in the week mm -hmm. where I've done this. So wow. it's, it's, it's mad the way it's all sort of interlinked. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's fascinating. So I'm glad I've done a, a bit of research on it, to be honest with you, because it's sort of just been like, I'm not just a fucking yeah. kinky, sleepy bastard. But how good is it though when your missus says, for amazing sex last night, love? Yeah. I weren't even in the pilot seat. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if I was. I know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's impressive, like, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, I was reading as well. They say it's more common in men. It happens to three times as many men as women. Wow. And they said when it does happen to women, the women just tend to wank. <laughs> <laughs> just there, just flicking the bean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the scrubbing board. I'm going to pass no comment on that whatsoever. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so, sleep shagging? Yeah, and if if you, if obviously you've realised you've got it and you want it checking and stuff like that, the, Online, it said they're not really sure how they deal with it, mm. but they said they imagine you go to a sleep doctor and they'd have a sleep study. God, <laughs> can imagine you that imagine? sleep study? <laughs> can you That'd imagine be funny, that? Wonder, Jesus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she had to have one, oh, there was something, something to do with her heart. And she had to have a sleep study and it recorded her and she was like, you fucking stay away from me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to listen to this. <laughs> Definitely the separate room on that night. Yeah. Bloody hell. Yeah. Fascinating, isn't it? The whole thing, what we do in our sleep. It's crazy. It's mm. crazy. I, I was reading loads on it last night, but um, it, they were tended saying the same sort of things. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but you've just put your laptop, like your laptop, down like it. You have actually finished. I have logged off. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna put it away in my bag. No, but you did that authentically then, like with a real laptop, you put it down. It was like, rather slow, That was it? my indication. I finished my story, I put my laptop down, I'm logging off. Yeah, yeah. I'm, do I'm done for the day. Um, I'll have to get a new screen and stuff for, uh, for next time. You will, time. for next time, yeah. I, I was going to draw the keyboard and all that on it, but I was like, do you know what, I'll just put my notes on it. Yeah. Looks dead nice, I think. Right, we need to um, finish up. <laughs> Fucking hell. Have you got your post-it notes and everything on there? Yeah. I, but that was the idea to, to go full post it notes and then when I was done and I, I had another topic then but as I was like half oh, I like I like writing with markers do you? yeah I can tell love it absolutely love it you can tell you're such a dad aren't you? yeah ah, love yeah. it love it love I'll it I'll probably it. give it to the kids actually they're, they're fucking love that right we need to go because yeah, we do, we're running yeah. on and yeah you know just for a go do you know what <laughs> I can't even say it. Idrophrodisia is idrophrodisia. This is a fetish factoid. Isn't it's that something you eat that makes you horny? No. Idrophrodisia is an arousal by sweat, particularly the genital sweat. Oh. The old pheromones. 
Well, yeah, uh, yeah, I can, I can understand that. I'm not going to talk not, about it because maybe not bollocks. Well, I, I started reading. I went, that's interesting. Pheromones will do that in a future episode. They are pheromones. Go. I believe in pheromones. Oh well, it works. Yeah. Well, there's a bit. Of, mm, not everybody believes in them, but I do. So there you go. Mm. Idrophrodisia is our fetish factoid today. It's an arousal by sweat, just as Jacob walks through. Uh, oof. <laughs> <laughs> Got a semi on now, Jay. <laughs> so there you go. You can sleep better knowing what idrophrodisia is. Yeah. I, I quite like a bit of sweat. Not like proper bow. But you know, like when you've been... In the moment sweat. Yeah, yeah, yeah in the yeah, moment yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, a little bit of sex sweat. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to leave on that bombshell. <laughs> So, guys and girls, if you're binge watching, go and put the kettle on. We'll see you in five. Yeah. If not, we'll see you next week. Lots of love. Bye. And there we have it. Another day made better by listening to the Curators of Chaos. Thanks for dropping by. And if you enjoyed the show, we'd really appreciate you sharing your love for the Pad the Cell podcast with your friends. Don't forget, give us a follow on our socials. Maybe leave us some five-star reviews. And feel free to send us an email to medic at the Pad the Cell podcast. Or even interact with us on Facebook, Insta, and our other socials. Because we love chatting to you. Be sure to stop by next week because, as Bowie says, I don't know where I'm going next, but I promise it won't be boring. Catch you soon.